close your eyes and try to give your full attention to your breath. Any thoughts that come up, any sounds that come up that are not related to the breath, they don't deserve your attention right now. You're trying to develop the mind, which is your most valuable possession. So give it time, give it your energy, and give it your full attention. That's one of the basic principles of the practice is you have to give before you get. You can't say, well, I want to guarantee first that this is going to work. The only guarantee is the guarantee of your own honesty, how honest you are in doing this, in giving us a real test. That's all the Buddha asks. He doesn't ask that you have to agree with everything he says. But he does say it's, it's good to test it. And to test it, you have to give it your full attention, you, have, you give it your full honesty. This is why generosity is the beginning of the path. In Thailand, this is for children, this is their first exposure to Buddhism, is they line up and put a little something in the monk's bowl. And it goes against the child's grain to give. But after a while, they begin to see that by giving, they get a sense of pleasure, get a sense of well-being. It lifts the mind up above its tendency to just want to hold on to things. And you see that you're happy to share. You see that your gift is now in somebody else's hands and they're going to use it, and you hope they're going to use it well. And it gives you a sense of your own worth, that you have something that other people want and you have more than enough to share. And you can realize that many times that's worth a lot more than the, the actual item itself. And it's the same with the precepts. There are times when it goes against the grain, not to tell a little lie or not to kill an inconvenient bug. But you say, I'm just going to give it a try. No killing, no stealing, no, no lying, no illicit sex, no intoxicants. And you begin to see that your life becomes better. You're in better terms with the rest of the world. There are no cases where you can think of harm that you've done, or it was in the past, but now you've made up your mind you're not going to do that harm anymore. And there's a sense of self-esteem that comes with that that you can find your happiness in a way that doesn't harm anybody. And so when you sit down to meditate, again, it's going to go against the grain. The mind wants to wander around wherever it wants. It, its feeling is that nobody can see what I'm doing, nobody can see what I'm thinking. This is one area where I'm totally free. But another part of the mind realizes that if the mind is just left to wander like that, it becomes a slave to its greed, aversion, and delusion. So you put up with the training. Give yourself to the training. So you can see what the results actually will be, a greater sense of well-being, a greater sense of stability inside, a greater sense that you can trust your own mind. So there are trades that we have to make, and we have to be willing to give before we can get. Do things that go a little bit against the grain. But you begin to realize whose grain is that. It's the grain of greed, the grain of aversion, the grain of delusion. and say, I need to follow their grain. I want to follow the grain of discernment, which may go against your normal grain, but after all, it becomes the grain of the mind. And then as you polish it, the grain looks really good. This is why the practice, as I said, begins with generosity, and it grows from there.